Hallelujah. We're going to be reading from the gospel according to Matthew from chapter 14. And I'm going to be reading from verses 22 to 33. And it says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. And when evening had come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? 32. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. 33 and the last one. It says, then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. So today we're looking at stepping out. Hello? What are we looking at? Thank you. Just making sure you're with me. Stepping out and stepping up. If you don't step out, you can't step up. Hallelujah. And we can see in chapter 14, the chapter begins with John the Baptist being beheaded. You know, and then it follows on by the feeding of the 5,000. So they had seen Jesus perform miracles. However, they were afraid. I don't know about you this morning. Have you seen Jesus perform miracles and you're still afraid? I say to you, like the word of God says, do not be afraid afraid hallelujah now it says in 33 immediately now immediately comes up in my version of the bible comes up three times immediately jesus made his disciples get into the boat they had been working they had been ministering to the people so after feeding the five thousand, the people thought you know what jesus let's make him king this man is so good we need to make him king but jesus knowing his purpose now, let me, just, let, me just, let me just stop here. When your time is right, nothing argues with you. Hallelujah. But Jesus knew he had a purpose. God had sent him to this earth for a purpose. And that purpose he had to accomplish. So making him king at that time was not in line with the purpose of God for him at that time. Hallelujah. And then it carries on. Because in John chapter 6 verse 15 it says... Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. From time to time, you need to go away. And I'm not saying, you know, it's good to go on holiday, don't get me wrong. But it's also, you know, like we were saying this morning, to take time out. Set time aside and hear what God has to say. So many of us are caught up with what the world has to say. If I were to say to you, when was the last time you heard from God? Please don't answer. Ask that question in your own heart. When was the last time I heard from God? Is it something you only do on Sunday? You only hear from God on Sunday when, you know, somebody is preaching or a song is being ministered? Is that the only time? Because if that is the only time you hear from God, you're in trouble. Hallelujah. You are in trouble. You cannot be a Sunday, Sunday Christian and expect to step out. You need to do more than that. Hallelujah. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat, you know, in verse 22. 
And then it says in 23, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain to pray by himself. He went to the mountain to pray. He had to step out. Step out from amongst the crowd. Step out from the multitude. Step out from even his disciples. He had to. Because he knew there was something that was about to happen. Can you be that person that can step out so that you can step up? Amen. Now it says, and when evening came, he was alone there on the mountain. And the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. 25. Now in the fourth watch of the night, so this is around about 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., the fourth watch of the night. What does Jesus do? He has finished praying. Then he thought, okay, my disciples that I have sent forth, let me go and meet them. Now when he sent them away, he never said, go and I will not come and meet you. So they should have been expecting Jesus. Have you ever looked at it that way? They should have been expectant that Jesus should be turning up any time from now. However, when he turned up, they were afraid. They were afraid. He tells us. It says in 26, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. Now, follow me closely. They were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And Jesus could sense that they were afraid. And what did he do? He spoke. He said, Because they cried out in fear, Immediately, Another immediately. Jesus spoke to them. Jesus would never leave you to suffer. If the enemy has lied to you, that you know what, it is because of all these sins you have committed, that is why you are suffering. Tell the enemy, you are a liar. Jesus would not look at you suffering. However, you need to do something. Because so much of this, you know, Jesus is going to do this, God is going to do this, but you have a responsibility as well. If you don't take responsibility, Jesus is still available. It hasn't changed and he will not change. So the best thing for you to do is to take responsibility. And let's carry on. It says in 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. Tell your neighbor, be of good cheer. Now he didn't stop there. He carried on. He said, it is I. It is I. He didn't stop there. He says, do not be afraid. Three things he told them. Three things. Be of good cheer. So I don't know how you have come in this morning, but be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Come on, just smile at somebody and let them feel, let them feel the cheerness coming from you. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. It is I. Jesus is saying to you, it is I. It is I. He's whispering it in your ears. He's shouting it out on loudspeakers. It is I. It is I. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. 29. Sorry, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, how many Peters in the house today? That Jesus, if, jokes apart, if it is you, because this figure we are seeing is looking like a ghost, but Jesus, if genuinely you know it is you, how many times in life situation have you said, Jesus, if you're there, answer. Jesus, are you there? And he's saying, I am here. And you're saying, Jesus, if it is you, if when I sleep and I wake up, let the results be under my pillow. Have you been there before? There's nothing wrong being there. The problem is with staying there. Hallelujah. Jesus, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. On the water. On the water. He didn't just say, command me to come. He was specific. He didn't say, eh, bring me to yourself. Does he say that in your Bible? I think I read through a few versions and I never saw where Peter said, just, just, just transport me to yourself. He didn't say that. He said, command me to come. Jesus, if it is you. And Jesus said, come. Jesus is saying to somebody this morning, come. Tell your neighbor, he's calling you, come. 
Say it like you're confident. Don't say it like you're afraid. Say it with confidence. The master is calling you. Come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. The others were still afraid. They didn't know what was going on. But if you know Peter very well, you know Peter is an I don't care man. Before he thinks, he has done. Now, I don't know how you want to view Peter this morning, but let me just introduce Peter to you as someone that is doggedly diligent, doggedly diligently loyal. You add all, all the extras to God. Say they are doing something. What are they doing here? Mm, Peter is there. Ah, Jesus, you know. <laughs> Go and read your Bible. You will know the things that Peter was talking about. And you will think, ah, how can, without thinking much, he wanted to, he wanted to do everything. Ah, Jesus, you don't have to die. You don't have to. Ah, ah. Up till the point of death, Peter was loyal to Christ. Up to the point, if you go and read this, the history, even when he was going to be executed, he didn't agree to be executed the same way Jesus was on the cross. He had to go upside down. Ah, ah. How can I be like Jesus? How can I die like Jesus? No. Put my own upside down. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. Please, don't, don't frown. It's all good news. I want you to be of good cheer. Tell your neighbor, be of good cheer. Walking on water is like asking someone to do the impossible. Peter is the only one apart from Jesus that we have on record that walked on water. So you can see the sort of person we're talking about here. You'll be able to do the miraculous as long as you focus on Jesus. Once you shift your gaze, there goes your focus. But as long as you remain focused on Christ, the miraculous is inevitable. If you can trust the Lord, you can step out. If you can, then you can step out. Peter trusted Christ. He trusted Jesus. When Jesus said, come, he trusted him and he did. He stepped out. Hallelujah. Now, being single-minded in Christ is to focus on Christ alone, not concerning yourself with whatever is around you. It doesn't concern you. Once your focus is on Christ, every other thing does not concern you. Because he that has called you, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what, what are you thinking? He has already done it. Hallelujah. So, let's leave Peter alone. Let's go to the other 11. Are you not interested in knowing what, what was about them? Because I was interested, so I read more about it. Now, the 11 other disciples did not even venture stepping out. And that is after a Jesus, is it you? A be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Mm. We have heard. They were his disciples. When Jesus tells us something, do we have that same attitude? I have heard. The ones that want to do it, let them do it. Me. I will stay back. They were his disciples. They weren't the Pharisees or the Sadducees or the scribes. They were the people that, was, that were working with Jesus. So you would have expected a bit more. Well, I expected a bit more. Because I thought, voice, they should have known Jesus' voice by now. So that even in the storm, when Jesus said, it is I, I would have expected them to, wow, all of them jump out. But they didn't. They were afraid. Three things I want to bring out here. There was fear. There was doubt. And then there was comfort. Three things about these 11 other disciples. Fear. One might be afraid because of, you know, an exaggeration of danger. They didn't know what would happen. But if I am right, I think most of them were fishermen. So worst case scenario, they would have swam. They didn't. They were afraid. The other reason is, even though the problem at hand looks real, they forgot that a greater solution was at hand. 
If this same Jesus in the, in the verses preceding 22 had just fed the 5,000, now he didn't tell us they opened a bakery. He didn't tell us they had so many fish. It says it was just a, a small boy's lunch. They had seen that. So at this point, you would expect, humanly speaking, that they should be able to launch out. But they didn't. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are in your walk with God. Maybe you're still treading with caution. We'll try it in case it doesn't work. Let me have something to fall back on. No, Jesus doesn't operate like that. You give him all. All. Because in the first place, everything you have was given to you by God. So he doesn't really need your permission. Hallelujah. But God being God, not creating a bunch of zombies that are remote controlled, he also gave us a will. May we not use our will against God. Another thing, there was doubt. They thought it was a ghost. They were unsure. Up to the point that even Jesus was telling them, it is I. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen Jesus before, but you kind of have a pictorial representation of what Jesus should look like from what we have seen over time. So even in the dark, you know, let, let, me, let, me, use, let me use, okay, let me use Brother Ike, a tall figure. Now, if Brother Ike is coming to me, will I think he's Pastor Kunle? I hope not. Because, number one, Brad Ike is tall. Pastor Kunle is tall also. I don't know why you are laughing. Okay. Now, Brother Ike speaks in a particular way. Pastor Kunle speaks in a particular way. So how could I, after knowing both of them for so long, confuse Pastor Kunle with Brother Ike or Brother Ike with Pastor Kunle? It's not possible. But do we do that with God? After many years of being born again, after many years of studying, reading the Bible, after many years of walking with God, God speaks and we are still questioning, is it you, Lord? Is it you, Lord? If you're in that zone, you can't step out. And if you can't step out, you can't step up. I pray if you're there, that the Lord himself picks you like he picked Peter. He picks you and he brings you to where he wants you to be in Jesus' name. So they did not know Jesus. Well, maybe they were doubting. Now, the third thing I want us to look at is they were comfortable. I put it here. I said they were comfortable with both life. Boat, as in B-O-A-T. They were comfortable with boat's life. And just, just so that you can laugh. And you must laugh. I've not even said it. Let me say it first. Now remember the Titanic. Everything was put in place. But what happened? It sunk. The arms of flesh will fail. But God never fails. Don't be too comfortable. With both life. They were comfortable. If we step out of this boat, what do we know is going to happen? Ah, let's stay here. Here is good. Here there's no water. Here we can't, mm, let's stay here. Now, before you begin to remove yourself and say, well, I'm not in any boat. The boat might not be a physical boat. It might be the boat of your job. It might be the boat of your career. It might be the boat of your marriage. It might be the boat of your education. It might be the boat of your, whatever it is that is making you feel too comfortable and God is calling you and you're saying, how am I going to leave all this as if you came with it? Think about it. You didn't come with it. He gave them to you. And if he says, leave them and come to me, please leave them. In fact, dust your hands and say, Lord, unto you I surrender. Pastor was telling us the other week, you know, that we should come out of our comfort zone. Step out of your comfort zone. What's making you too comfortable? You need to step out. 
Some of us are too comfortable. God is now second place. In fact, for some people, I don't even know what place we have put God. Because now we're so comfortable. We have arrived. <laughs> we have arrived. Let me just tell you. Naked you came. Naked you will return. Everything remains here. So I beg you, as I encourage you, I beseech you, brethren, please do what is right. Step out and step up for God. Now notice that Peter did not call out to the disciples that were in the boat with him. Did you notice that? When he, was, when he stepped out, when he said, Jesus, if it is you, Lord, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. And he was looking, ah, it is windy, it is this, it is that. He didn't say to the other disciples, help me. Did he? No. He didn't. Now, if you think about it, let's, let's just put our imagination on. If he stepped out of the boat, I don't think he would have gone very far before he started sinking. So, technically speaking, it would have been easier for the disciples to catch him and bring him back into the boat. Are you with me? Than for Jesus. Because they were, if Jesus was close to them, they wouldn't have said it is a ghost. They would have known. So that tells me that Jesus was a few meters away. Yet, Peter did not call on the other disciples. He called on Jesus. Because Peter knows that Jesus is enough to save him. Hallelujah. We sing that song, Christ is enough for me. Christ indeed is more than enough for us. Hallelujah. Christ is enough for us. We don't need anything else when we've got Christ. Because he, with Christ comes everything. In the scripture it tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added. You fill in the gap with, with whatever every other thing is. But you need to seek God first. Hallelujah. As we all know, Jesus means Savior. So Peter knew who to call upon in the day of his crisis. Who do you call upon in the day of your crisis? Who do you call upon in the day of your crisis? Your best friend? Your husband? Your wife? Peter called on Jesus. Please, in the day of your crisis, call on Jesus. Because there will be storms. If we tell you there are no storms, we lie to you. There will be storms. But with the storms, Jesus is always there. Hallelujah. In the midst of the storm, he's there. He's waiting. He's calling on you. He's saying, come, come, come. And what, did it, what, what does it tell us? It says, and when Jesus, when, sorry, when Peter saw that he was sinking, what did he do? He cried out, Lord, save me. The prayer was not a night vigil. It was just three words. Lord, save me. Sometimes your prayer doesn't have to be long, but it is quite potent. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And he didn't say, oh, I'll come and save you later. It was immediately that he was saved. Immediately. Hallelujah. If you expect great things from God, are you prepared to attempt great things for God? Because if I say here now that, you know, how many of us are expecting great things from God? Hallelujah. We're expecting great things, great things, great things from God. All hands will go up. But are you prepared to do great things? for God I ask you that question and I also ask myself that question what length am I prepared to go to for God you will never walk on water if you do not get out of the boat the other 11 did not walk on water there's no record of them walking on water there's just the record of Peter walking on water if you do not get out of the boat, you can never walk on water. 
Now, please listen to this very quickly. Whatever you do, do not do it on your own. Walking on water is not something you do on your own. Hallelujah. Don't attempt walking on water on your own. If you go back to the story, you can see that Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And what did Jesus do? Jesus said, come. He was instructed. He was instructed. Now, if peradventure, any of the other disciples had said, ah, if Peter is doing it, I'm going to do it. You jump on the bad wagon, you are in trouble. If you're here trying to keep up with the Joneses, you are in trouble. If he has not instructed you to do it, don't do it. Even if it looks good, it is what everyone is doing. It is trending. It is the in thing. If he has not instructed you to do it, don't do it. So that we're not just running a rat race. It is happening here, we run there. It is happening there, we run there. Everywhere it is happening, we want to be there. Is that what God is saying to you? If he has not instructed you, don't do it. Because he has a plan for you. Hallelujah. He has a plan for you. And the plans of God for you, they are good plans. So when you're busy running helter-skelter, he's wondering what is going on. Just imagine, there is no fire alarm. There is nothing. And then everybody starts running. I mean, you will look back and think, what is going on? Why are they running? Sometimes this is how we make God. God is thinking, what is going on? Why are they running up and down? Because you're trying to run another person's race. We know, it has been said on, from this platform a lot of times, if you run another person's race, the best you can ever be is a successful failure. Because in the eyes of many, they will say you were successful. But in the eyes of the master that sent you, May we not fail in Jesus' name. So please don't run another person's race. Run your own race. It might be difficult. Stay there. Hallelujah. If you believe that God is omnipresent, he will be there with you. Hallelujah. For those of you that have been fortunate enough to, you know, to go to the hospital or the birthing center to go and give birth to a baby. Labor is never a, a, a walk in the park. It's labor. That's why it's called labor. But at the end of it, there's victory. Hallelujah. There's victory. You have something to say, wow, thank God. After all this labor, look at what the Lord has done for me. So it doesn't matter if someone was in labor for two minutes. That's their lot. If someone is in labor for 12 hours, that's their lot. But you can now say, well, because this person was in labor for two minutes. Well, yes, you can, you can, you can convert that which is good. Don't get me wrong. But if God says you're going to be there for this reason, maybe while you're in that labor, the nurse that is, you know, attending to you, you have the opportunity to preach the gospel to her. Someone that is there for two minutes, they are in and out. They were not able to do that. Am I condemning them? No. That is not what God's purpose for them was. So yours might just be different. Stay on course. Hallelujah. Remember, we're stepping out and stepping up. Hallelujah. Now remember, Daniel 11.32 tells us, they that know their God. They that know their God. So can you see that there's something that you have to do? You have to know God so that you can be strong and then you can do great exploits. So no matter how adverse your situation may be, Jesus will be there to help you out. I hear somebody say, Amen. He made the sea. So the sea must obey him. Hallelujah. If we know that God is the maker of the heaven and the earth, he made the sea. Hallelujah. He made it so when he speaks to it, it should obey. And that is what happened. But the disciples had forgotten temporarily that Jesus knows all about the sea. And that's why they were afraid. So I don't know. I don't know. We are here to learn. I don't know, maybe you are thinking or you have temporarily forgotten that God is the master of the universe. And because God is the master of the universe, he has everything in the palm of his hands. We sing that song, he's got the whole world in his hands. If you sincerely know that he's got the whole world in his hands, are you not in the world? 
then you know. Like he tells us in the Bible, he has inscribed your name on the palm of his hand. What best place to be? Not under his feet, whereby he doesn't see. How many of you can function in a day without looking at your palm at one point? Even if it's to pick up your phone and check your messages. So the palm is a very, very significant part of your body. And that is where God has placed you. So there is no need to be afraid. Just go all out and see what God will do for you. Hallelujah. Do you trust God enough as the omnipotent God? He has the power. He can do it. Hallelujah. Do you trust him enough that when I step out, I can step up because God has the power to keep me. God has the power to uphold me. Do you believe? Or is it just mere words from your mouth? You may be going through some storms in your life, but don't fear, for Jesus is there to help you. Hallelujah. Jesus is there to help you. Our storms are different. Your storm might be in your health. Your storm might be in your career. Your storm might be in your family. But regardless of what the storm is, Jesus remains constant. And he says, I am here. It is I. Be of good cheer. So I want you to live here today knowing that yes, Jesus is interested in me. He didn't leave Peter to sink. He gave him his hand. He held on to him. He caught him and he pulled him out. And the Lord is ready to pull you out this morning. I pray that you're ready to do the same. No matter what you're going through, you're not alone. Tell your neighbor you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Tell them until they hear. You are not alone. Hallelujah. We're stepping out and stepping up. Hallelujah. Now when you step out, you step out and you start singing songs like Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Nisi, you are my Ebenezer, Jehovah Adonai, we give you glory, honor, power, majesty, you are the Lord. Okay, for some of you that don't know it, let me go slowly. I got a bit excited. When you step out and step up, you recognize that God is our ever-present help in time of need. He's ever-present, Jehovah Shammah. And then you also realize that he's Jehovah Nisi, the banner. He's our banner. He's showing us off as well. He's showing off on Friday. Pastor Kule was saying that, you know, from the scriptures, if I be lifted up, what will he do? He will draw men unto himself. So if he's the banner and you're walking with him, you too, you are flying. Do you not understand? I'm not saying flying, that type of flying, but you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. You also say, he's my Ebenezer. You know that where I am today, it is God that has brought me this far. And if he has brought me this far, he is able. He is able. He is able. He is able. He is able to carry on carrying me. Hallelujah. He's able to carry on carrying me. When I cannot carry myself, he's able, he's there, he's willing, he's available to carry me. Amen. Come on, you need to be excited. All these are promises from God. They are not things I have made up. They are from the scripture. Hallelujah. And then you call him Jehovah Adonai. Your Lord, your master. Your Lord, your master. Is he Lord of your life? Is it the master of your life? And by the time you've done all this, you give him all the glory. Because he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves all adoration. We cannot step out to step up if we don't know God. So I don't know whether you're here this morning. And you do not know the Lord. You haven't made the Lord your personal Lord and Savior. The only reason we can shout and be excited about all, this, all these things is because we have a relationship with God. You could have been coming to church. It's good, but it won't take you very far. You need to make that commitment to God. You need to give your heart to Jesus. 
you need to, if you're, if you're here and you're thinking, yeah, but I've already done that, but you know what? The cares of this world, they've just, you know, distracted me, like they distracted Peter. God is here. He's willing. He's calling. He's saying, come. He's saying, come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The rest is a promise. The rest is sure. There's an assurance of God's rest, but you need to come. Hallelujah. You need to come. Romans 8 verse 19. It says, For the earnest expectation of creation, of the creation, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, as I finish, a child and a son are different in terms of their maturity. So we can all say here, we are children of God. Correct? But we need to move from that level of general and step it up and call yourself a son of God. A child has the same relationship with a father as a son. But a son can walk in more of the authority and power of the father because he's mature. The Bible tells us that a child is not different from a servant as long as he remains a child. But he's not wanting us to remain at that level. He wants us to step up, be called sons of God. And most importantly, the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is waiting. The world is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. To fulfill this purpose, we must become sons of God. So step up and do greater things for the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.